This tutorial will teach you two of the most basic pottery hand building techniques, how to make a pinch pot and coil building. I'm also going to show you how to score and slip clay together. If you love art and like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Start with a ball of clay that you can fit in your hand and take your hand and mold your clay into a sphere. A sphere is a three-dimensional circle and because the clay is brown, it's going to look like a meatball. Press your thumb down into the clay but not all the way through. Support on one hand and with one hand only, pinch and turn, pinch and turn all the way around. It's okay if it's not perfectly smooth. You're gonna spend a lot of time smoothing your clay and perfecting it, and you can tap it on the table to kind of give the very last part of your pinch pot a nice, thick surface. Coil building. You are gonna take another piece of clay, and you are going to roll it on the table from the center out to make a coil. It looks like a rope or maybe a snake, and I bet you've done this before with Play-Doh. We want to make sure that the coil is not thicker than your thumb, but it needs to be thicker than your pinky. So your index finger is a perfect unit of measurement. You're going to use your coils to make circles to build this into a jug. Smooth the ends together and try to make it to where you can't even tell where you join the coil together. You're gonna do this over and over until you have built up your jug into the shape and size that you would like. Keep making coils. Just remember, you want the coils to be consistent. Smaller than your thumb, bigger than your pinky. Make sure you are rolling from the center out, and if it gets kind of flat, just pinch it back into a round shape and always use both hands. Notice how every coil I make is the same width, but the circle is getting smaller as I go towards the top. The very last coil you're gonna add is called the lip. Yes, you heard that right, lip. And you wanna make sure that this coil is really smooth and a great shape because it's gonna be the coil that you see on top. One of the most important techniques you're ever gonna learn with clay is called score and slip. We're using a fork and you're gonna make score marks on both surfaces of your coils to connect them. It doesn't do enough just to smash them together. You wanna to open the surface of the clay so that the coil can fuse itself to the other coil. Slip is basically clay and water. Think of the slip as the glue. You're gonna put slip just on one of the surfaces. You're gonna press the coils together and it's gonna make this satisfying kind of sound as it goes into your score marks. Score, slip, blend. Blending your coils on the inside is super important to make sure that your clay actually sticks together and it won't separate once it dries out. I prefer to use my hand inside the container, but you can experiment with different clay tools. Every one is a little bit different. The outside needs to be blended also, and you can use a tool to kind of press the two seams together. And if you wanna let your coil show, you can leave a line that goes all the way around for decoration. You're gonna be spending a lot of time blending and smoothing your clay, so enjoy it. That's the fun part, is getting to use your hands and work with the really satisfying feeling of clay. 
score, slip, and blend every single coil. This is something you must do just like if you were building a house, you wouldn't nail down some of the boards. You would make sure that you nailed down every single board. Make sure your score marks are always touching and you only have to put slip on one of the surfaces. If you want your jug to go in, make sure your coils are still that standard size, but the circles themselves are getting smaller, smaller, and smaller as you go up. Keep adding coils, keep scoring and slipping and blending each and every coil until you have your jug the right size and shape. Pottery can be expensive. Don't let not having a kiln stop you. I'm using Amico air dry clay and it doesn't require a kiln at all. So work with what options you have because clay is just too much fun not to try. A good place to stop is when the coils get so small that you have a hard time blending the inside of your container. This would be a good time to let it dry in a bag, maybe overnight, so it gets a little bit harder, um, which actually makes it easier to blend and smooth. I'm going to obsessively smooth my clay um, so it's ready for any decorations that I might wanna add. And I would never call this finished until I added one more coil for the lip of this container. You could certainly stop here, but in my next video, I'm gonna show you how to hand build facial features to make a face jug. Face jugs are one of my most favorite types of pottery. Never heard of them, look them up, and I'm gonna teach you how to make one in my next video.